Hello again YouTube. Just a quick video I'm putting together here. Uh, it's a product test. I've never done anything like this before. But uh, over the, the, the past couple of months, whilst I've been getting more into putting stuff on YouTube, um, I've just picked up a bit of kit or a couple of bits of kit. Personally, I'm looking at YouTube just as a bit of fun, to be honest with you. It's just a hobby more than anything. So I don't want to invest tons of money into it. Um, but what I want to do is I want to get some kit that's usable that allows me to knock up half decent videos that I'm yeah, not that ashamed of. So what I'm going to do is over the next few videos I'm going to put together some product reviews on the kit I'm using, uh, why I chose it and how it's performing. Um, and ultimately, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to ask the question, can you really do YouTube on a budget? To be honest, I think you can. So anyway, um, let's kick off with this. Now this is uh, a gimbal. Now, okay, let's get this into perspective. You're saying, I'm saying to you, I want to do YouTube on a budget, and here I am buying a gimbal, which is, let's be honest, you know, that's a lot of people would say, well, that's a nice to have, isn't it? So for those of you who aren't familiar what, with what a gimbal is, basically it's a little gizmo you put your action camera into and it keeps the action camera level regardless of what you're doing. So whether you're running, uh, mountain biking, kayaking, skiing, whatever you're doing, uh, you get a nice level steady camera shot rather than the camera dancing about all over the place, which is what you see you know, when somebody's not wearing one. So yes, it is a nice to have item. But um, they come in sort of various price brackets. If you want a really good one, how much are you going to pay? You know, 300, 400 quid, something like that. Um, but I've just recently had a birthday and uh, I had some money uh, left over as a result of that. And this Fiu Tech WG2 uh, gimbal uh, was on offer on Amazon. There was a flash sale and it was 170 quid. Now I think that's worth a punt, to be honest with you. So um, yeah, what I'm gonna do is, uh, let me just show you the unit. It's a really nice little unit, take it out of the bag. So that's what the unit looks like. Um, it's really nicely put together. It's got a lovely solid feel. Now, the, the draw for me on this was, was two things. One, obviously the price, because there's not a lot else around as a wearable gimbal. Uh, at this price and I stress that bit wearable because even though this looks like a chunk of kit you really can attach it to a chest harness um, <laughs> I've seen in their advertising somebody with it on a motorcycle helmet I there's no way in the world I'd put that on a bicycle helmet to be honest with you but I think yeah chest harness that's doable um, and it also comes with a, a really nice sort of like hand grip selfie stick thing which would be great if you're running or something like that so that's you know so we've got price uh, wearability plus also and this is a bit unique to this it's waterproof it's uh, I think it's IP68 rated uh, so you know it, theoretically it can be submerged not for a long time their own instructions tell you not to submerge it for a long time uh, but uh, yeah it's uh, you know, if you're out, let's say that you're out running or on a mountain bike and you're in the UK, you're going to get wet at some point. So that to me makes a lot of sense that you pick up one of these that does have some weatherproofing built in. Um, so right, there's the introduction. Uh, let's get into it. So let's deal with that claim that this is wearable. Um, yes, it is. Comes with like a little adapter down here that allows you to adapt it to a GoPro mount. And uh, what I've done is I've just put it onto my chest harness here. This is kind of like the setup that you, if you watch any of the mountain bikers on YouTube, this is kind of the setup that they all use. And uh, it's a bit of a lump of stuff on your chest. Uh, and I am a bit conscious about that. And I'm conscious about it for two reasons. One, will I look like an absolute dickhead wearing this through the woods? Probably, but I look like a dickhead most of the time. So I'm not gonna let that bother me. Uh, but secondly, I think for me, the bigger consideration is how robust is this if I go over the bars or something and land on it? Because it's right out there. It's right out in front of you. So uh, one, there's a little bit of me that says, uh, yeah, don't really fancy that impacting into my chest and doing me more damage than I have to. 
uh, but there's also a little bit that says, Jesus, you know, it, it feels really nicely put together, but I wouldn't want to land um, all of me on it and test its robustness that way. But again, only time will tell. Um, and I think probably what's more important and what we, we'll all be more interested in is the picture quality that you get from it. So just before I go on to do a proper road test with you, I'm going to talk about some of the features I really like. And the first one is that you can set the angle of the camera simply by moving it. So um, you set the level that it's going to track to simply by swiveling the body of the camera, hold it for a couple of seconds, and you get a little buzz from the motor, sort of haptic feedback sort of thing to confirm it. So you can see I've just set it up there to point upwards. You can put it to roughly any angle. Now here you can see one of the design constraints of this. You're limited to 70 degrees of roll and beyond 70 degrees of roll uh, the the mounting frame will strike the frame of the gimbal so that's just something to bear in mind if you were going to do something really extreme with it I wouldn't worry too much about it if you're mountain biking or something because if you go beyond 70 degrees you've got other problems to worry about but I think if you were going to do something a little bit more extreme snowboarding or something like that that could be a consideration comes with quite a cool phone app. There's not many things that you can do with the phone app, but what I like about the phone app is it's stable. It's never failed to connect to the device. Um, you can connect Bluetooth right from the app. And you can do basic things like pan the camera, swivel the camera, uh, and you can also set sort of auto tracking, stuff like that, if you wanted to do some time lapse photography. Um, I'm running iOS 6 there, but it comes with uh, Android as well. Also comes with this nice little carry case, little soft carry case. I'm not too worried that it's not a hard shell case because to be honest with you, this is going to be in a backpack most of the time it's not being used. So it'll be fairly well protected in any case. Comes with a couple of nice little tripod accessories. Firstly, this really nifty little table tripod. That would be great for your tracking shots. And then, of course, you've got this handheld um, mount here, which, uh, to be honest with you, this is so robust. This looks more like something you'd use in law enforcement than video production. Um, and that's got a really sturdy, chunky feel about it. In fact, I'd safely put a DSLR at the end of this. So, uh, yeah, really like that one. Nice work, Firetech. So, <clears throat> like I said, the uh, the real test is does it work? So uh, I thought I'd pick uh, I thought I'd take the mountain bike out. There it is, um, and uh, pick somewhere quite bumpy, and do two runs. One just with the GoPro on a chest harness without the gimbal, and one with the gimbal. So there you go, those are just my thoughts on the Firetech WG2. Personally, I think it's a really nice little gimbal. Um, obviously, I've got nothing to compare it to. It's the first uh, gimbal I've owned. But what I can say is that uh, from the brief bit of testing I've done with it, it really, really improves the on-bike footage. And I can imagine it would do that for any action shot that you're taking. 
it's great that you can keep the camera at a level. You can just set it at a level and it will always track to that level. Um, and that's something that I've always thought when I've got a camera on the bike because even though you put it on a chest harness and after a little bit of trial and error, you kind of find a level that works for you. Uh, naturally on something like a mountain bike you're always moving, your body's always moving so that level's never going to be stable so having the gimbal there really really improves it. I think it's a really nicely put together little unit um, got some really great little design features, very well thought out I mean even things like the fact that you can adjust the length of the, the arm to balance the camera so you can take a variety of camera sizes on here right from the little session that I'm using uh, all the way up to the, the larger GoPro units and then simply just balance them out by moving them along the arm. I think that's great. As I say it comes with a couple of really nice accessories. That handheld thing and tripod, tabletop tripod combination is currently holding an LED light for me so um, they're getting used well beyond that camera. Uh, and like I say, you know, just that, that hand grip itself is really, really well put together. Now when you, you factor in the price, um, it certainly seems like a bit of a bargain. Um, I'm going to add a caveat to that in that I haven't really done any extensive testing on it yet. So I can't comment on longevity or battery life. I see mixed reviews online about longevity, but it's like anything, you know, you can always get a bad uh, unit, uh, a Friday afternoon model, you know, or something like that. Um, and equally, not everyone looks after their kit in the same way, so I can't really comment on how accurate some of the negative reviews I've seen on longevity are. Equally, battery life. Uh, Fiutech in the manual claim, I think, five hours. It's possible. Uh, I have yet to test it, uh, but they are, you know, they're not huge motors um, and I would have thought that there's a decent battery capacity in there. So five hours could be reasonable, but I guess a lot of that depends on what you're doing with it because the more the motors have to work, the less time you're going to get out of it. So I think probably what I'll do is I'll post an update to this with what I found in terms of battery life out of the unit. Um, other than that, you know, at this moment in time, I'm really, really happy with it. I think it was 170 quid well spent. Um, if you're going to buy, buy one, I'd say keep an eye on Amazon. Uh, I certainly got lucky there with a flash deal that saved me about 30 quid. But I think even at around 200, you know, it's, it's definitely worth a shot. I'm going to be using it quite a bit. Uh, so you'll probably see in my YouTube videos going forward um, footage that is created with this. Um, and obviously what that will do is that will allow me to post updates to this review as we go forward. So thanks for watching uh, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.